One of my PAs got me. It's an actual dancing group. And I can't show you how he dances because I'll have to mute the audio. Copyright. All right, I'll mute it. Back, back, back from the dead. <laughs> And then what's cool when it's done for 30 minutes after it dances like it's like an auto shut off if he's by music like close to the sensor he'll move Groot I am Groot what's up guys welcome back to my channel I actually have a couple old videos that I didn't like the production value and so they are on private and a bunch of you have been messaging me mad because you can't access them. So I'm going to go back and touch on a couple of old subjects that I've done before and apply any new knowledge that I can give you guys now. So the question always arises, are Ouija boards opening the door to the devil? Well, if you get technical, if a Ouija board is opening the door to the unknown, so is a digital recorder and a mel meter and um, night vision and X cam and should I keep going? That's my opinion on a Ouija board. They are no different than any other piece of equipment that we use. Not different at all. Okay, I have a Ouija board here. I don't think this one's been used actually. So on the bottom it says ages eight and up just in case you need, you know, to know the age limit. There's some meme going around the internet that I shared at some point that was like, so you have to be 21 to drink alcohol, 18 to get your own house, 16 to, you know, drive, and 8 to summon demons. Ouija boards don't scare me at all. The hype behind Ouija boards being dangerous is all thanks to our friends in Hollywood. I think that any piece of equipment, including a Ouija board, can be used maliciously, and perhaps then you probably shouldn't use that particular Ouija board. But even then, if you guys want to look up a guy named Robert Merch, he has like the world's largest Ouija board collection. He collects Ouija boards from everywhere, literally. Even Robert Merch is like, they're not bad like people claim that they are. But Hollywood makes them bad. In fact, Robert Merch was on the set for the movie Ouija. So he helped actually with the planchette when they look through the eye of the planchette and there's a bunch of apparitions. He like, I guess one of the kids that was on set was like, oh, if you hold this up and look through it, can you see the spirits? And he was like, no, but that's a great idea for this movie. Ouija boards are harmless unless used maliciously. But then again, a digital recorder can be used maliciously. A spirit box can be used maliciously. As much as I say about, you know, Ouija boards don't scare me, I was not a kid that played with Ouija boards, so I wasn't like a kid down in my grandma's basement hanging out playing with a Ouija board by myself, that's kind of creepy. Like that's, you're getting into a different realm. I just believe that a Ouija board is like any other piece of equipment. And if you're gonna use it to contact the other side, don't be shocked when something comes through. And even like with a digital recorder or an ovulus or whatever else, you can't see the apparition that you're having a conversation with. So you don't know if it's good or bad. 
And the same goes for if you're using a Ouija board. Now I am a little superstitious, I'm not gonna lie. I cleanse my Ouija board before I use it. I cleanse my Ouija board with salt water or holy water, whatever you know specification you wanna use on it. Oh, there's dowsing rods. That's what was making that noise. Did you hear that? These are dowsing rods. We'll do another video on those. So here's one planchette. This is a light up kind of glow planchette. This is an actual glow in the dark planchette. I have both of my Ouija boards in here actually. So if I'm ghost hunting like with my crew, I take my glow in the dark Ouija board if we use it. Do I use it all the time? No. Honestly, to use a Ouija board, you have to have a lot of patience, still hands, and depending on how you're sitting, eventually your legs are gonna fall asleep, seriously. Which is why I don't use them all the time. So this is brand spanking new. I haven't even used this once yet. This is your basic Ouija board right here. It's a piece of cardboard and people are like, don't use a Ouija board. Oh my God, you're gonna bring out 666 and the devil himself is gonna show himself. I'm like, please you guys. Y'all have watched one too many scary movies on HBO. Why do I not think a Ouija board is scary? I've used it a lot. I can't lie and say that I haven't had things bad come through on it. There is a so-called demon of a Ouija board or the Ouija board, which is called Zozo. I have had something come through claiming to be that. Although I've called it out and said, I don't buy it. And then it pretty much goes away. Oddly, most of the times I have done my communication through Ouija boards, I never do it alone. I only do it with someone that I trust. You have to make sure someone is documenting it so that if you miss a word or, or mess up something because it's dark, that you're able to fix it later. It can get really tiring, honestly, the way you have to hold your hands where you're just barely holding the planchette. And what you, what I first do to give you guys advice if you haven't used a Ouija board, is I will sit down and I'll say, okay, you push the planchette so that I know what it feels like and the other person pushes it towards me. And then I push the planchette back so that's the force behind it if one of us is moving it. If your hands are barely touching the planchette, then there shouldn't be a cause or a reason that the planchette's getting violently moved around unless it's some sort of a spirit, which also is why you should not be doing this with someone you don't trust. But that's ghost hunting in general. You shouldn't be doing it with someone that you don't trust. Sometimes they spell things out that make sense and sometimes they don't. Sometimes you get EVPs on a digital recorder that makes sense and sometimes you have no idea what they're saying. It's the exact same thing. What's the stigma from? People tell stories, stories make it on to documentary shows or storytelling shows or Hollywood, which is, oh, when I was eight years old, I was hanging out with my friends and we pulled out the Ouija board and something came through that spelled demon. Okay, once again, you guys, I've taught you, don't believe everything on TV not everything you interact with is dark and demons. Pretty freaking rare. It could be something angry or mad or pissed off, but to like go straight to the demon side is like, come on y'all, like let's get back to the game. Let's get back to reality. But honestly, if there's a little kid playing with a Ouija board, there could for sure be a malicious spirit come through. A malicious spirit doesn't have to be a demon. It could be someone that just wants to mess with you and they spell out demon. So you have to determine through basically you're investigating, you're asking questions, it kind of turns into a questionnaire, is how legitimate is this that I'm talking to? You have to determine that. And honestly, when you hear people tell stories of like, oh, I was eight and I played with the Ouija board and it freaked me out and this is what happened, it actually moved, of course it's gonna scare everyone because it kind of puts the other realm of the other side into our realm which it can physically manifest something and move something and of course it's gonna scare people. I'm still a little superstitious with Ouija boards only to the fact I would never use a used Ouija board. I would never use someone else's Ouija board. I like to make sure that mine are, I call it cleansed properly. I don't even know if that works to be honest. I guess it makes my conscience feel better Army bases and Navy bases, Air Force bases, everything is so old, so it's usually really haunted, like all the ships, obviously. So I got this phone call really late at night, 
and Blake had been doing it's like a night watch basically he had to stay he had to stay in the barracks which is where the soldiers live for 24 hours he had watch so he called me at like 1 a.m. and him and this other soldier that were on duty they were like sitting in the main hall just watching cable TV they basically have to make sure they keep the riffraff out no one under age is allowed in that kind of thing and they said that the elevator uh, kept going up by itself and down and then the doors would open and no one would be there and they said it happened like six or eight times it just kept happening they were too busy watching TV they didn't really care what was going on so at some point they decide to walk over to the elevator because they think maybe they need to call maintenance to come in and fix whatever is happening with it. They're afraid someone's going to get in the elevator and get stuck. So they walk up to the elevator and the doors open and inside of the elevator is this Ouija board and it was this color so it was a lighter Ouija board. It wasn't a glow in the dark one and someone had written like horrible like definitely satanic stuff on it. Um, there was a lot of like 666 on there. Um, the Ouija board itself up in this area had been stabbed like three times, I think. We all know that anything that comes in threes is mocking of the Holy Trinity, which usually is pretty bad. Even if it was someone just practicing, you know, being satanic or whatever, black magic, I don't know. So Blake is a little naive at this point, and he picks up the Ouija board and thinking nothing of it, um, he calls me and says, well, what should I do with it? And I was like, probably throw it away. I don't know why he decided to bring it to our house, but he did. We had nonstop movement, like traffic, in the upper attic area of our house. That's another story. We're gonna have to talk about that someday. Anyway, we ended up moving and the day we moved out, I found the Ouija board outside. He'd put it kind of by this like outdoor, um, sort of like deck din um, shelter where they kept like extra wood for the fireplace. I said, Where, why has this been here this whole time? Like what's going on? He's like, oh my God, I totally forgot we even had it. So we didn't want to leave it there for the next renters that had moved in. So we decided to take it I think we took it to like a Wells Fargo dumpster and put it there because I had no idea that it had been hanging out at my house that whole time. So I will say that I do have some reservations when it comes to using other people's Ouija boards or using Ouija boards that I don't know, you know, what they have been used for in the past. Like, was there a purpose for uh, you know intentions of being good or was it used in the name of you know Satanism and black magic so that's what makes me nervous now according to Robert Murch once again if you guys want to know like the history behind Ouija boards and like everything you could want to know about a Ouija board look him up because he has an awesome blog and website about everything Robert Murch swears that nothing can get attached to a board and he owns hundreds of them and he never has any problems in his house and that it's just it's like an old wives tale basically I just can't help that like I've had an experience where I was like I just don't I don't agree with you I'm so sorry a lot of people are like touching or looking at a Ouija board scares me it just scares me like come on guys it's it's numbers and letters on a board it's nothing like they depict in the movies. You need to really like stop and think about where your fear came from for a Ouija board. Did like a traumatic movie make you upset about it? Um, you know, did you hear tales as a kid growing up? And even if you had a bad experience with a Ouija board, well, maybe you weren't using it properly. Honestly, like how I say I open it with like either holy water or salt water and close it the same way because I want to make sure that anything is coming in for the good and I also announce when I use a Ouija board that um, if there's anything really dark that it's not allowed to come through once again like I have told you guys when you get followed home with attachments you have to set your own boundaries it goes right back to would you open your door and let strangers walk in your house and just live there of course not or you gotta pay rent. But seriously, you have to set up boundaries even when it comes to ghost hunting or not, maybe that's your thing. That's okay too. 
Do you guys have any questions about Ouija boards that I didn't answer? Is there anything you want to know? If you guys have experienced anything with a Ouija board, please comment below. If there's anything that you guys want to talk about next, please let me know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Please give my video a thumbs up and I will catch you guys next time. Hell yeah.